the Emirates Serena. I was telling you earlier that Celtic, of course, was the first British club to win the European Cup, and the manager at the time was Glasgow's very own Jock Steen. What a legend. For the action in here, inside the arena, we turn our attention next to the Olympic bronze medalist in the men's singles. It's Victor Axelson, who also happened to win a bronze medal at the 2014 World Championships. He's up against uh, Takuma Ueda of Japan. So as far as this section of the draw is concerned, well, we can see that the number nine seed, Ang Ka Long of Hong Kong, has come through his little bit. And I can tell you that Rule Must and Heino of Finland are battling it out on court right now. And in fact, it is the Finnish player who's won the opening game 22-20. So we're keeping it right up to date with all the action. So Victor Axelsson, the number three seed here at these World Championships, 23 years of age now, this tall Dane. That bronze medal in Copenhagen three years ago, lost to Lee Chong Wei in that semi-final. And Lee Chong Wei, of course, lost in the final. Former European champion, won gold at the European Championships last year. Winner at the end of last year, the Super Series Finals in Dubai, of his very first Super Series title when contesting his seventh Super Series Tournament Final. So, Jitorut Tanu Kadrapat of Thailand is our umpire for this one. There is Victor Axelson. Born in Onza, which is the birthplace of Hans Christian Andersen, the author and writer of children's fairy tales and stories. And of course, it's the city where we play the Denmark Open each year. He has been as high as number two in the world ranking, in fact, a total of five weeks as world number two across three different spells. Won the India Super Series event earlier this year. His opponent is 28, born in Tokyo. He's been as high as 12, as you can see. Two weeks from the 27th of June, 2013. But I think most badminton fans will remember him playing the third men's singles in the deciding match of the 2014 Thomas Cup in Delhi. It all came down to that third men's singles and he beat Darren Liu of Malaysia to lift the cup for Japan. Well, as you can see, this will be the fourth meeting between these two Ready players. Ueda won the very first encounter, which obviously means that Ueda. Victor Axelson has won the last two, including last year in the quarterfinal of the China Open. 31 minutes for that last meeting, and that really was very one-sided, wasn't it? 21-11, 21-6. So, Rick De Roche of Canada, the service judge, I've already mentioned that Jitorut Tanu Kadrapat of Thailand is our umpire. Goodness me, she's had a busy day, the umpire. She was first on this morning, wasn't she? First match on our court. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Victor Axelsen. Denmark. And on my left, Ueda Takuma Cheben. Ueda Takuma to serve. Love all, play.
should pay too much attention to Takuma Ueda's current world ranking of 55. He's coming back from injury. He's a much, much play better player than his ranking suggests. Well, Victor Axelson True. looking a little bit Love. nervous here. I know we've only had a couple of rallies. Yeah, and just just, just prove what, uh, what you just said. Um, I'm sure the Victor thinks that this is a... Uh, a quite, a quite tough draw, um, and as you said, that, that Ueda is a much tougher opponent than his uh, his current ranking suggests. Slightly mistimed lift from Axelson to, towards Ueda's forehand uh, gave him a, a good opportunity here. Of course, Axelson, when he won his bronze medal in Rio last year at the Olympic Games, beat the two time former champion Lin Dan in that bronze medal playoff match. Oh, that's nice. No, oh, he's a tall man. Service all one. 94, six foot Two, four. Three. Yeah, and it's very, very important to find the right, both uh, length and height on, on your uh, rear court shots, because otherwise he will punish you with his, uh, his very strong attack. So if you play it too high, he's got a lot of time and, and too many options. And if you play it too low, as we saw before, then uh, he will meet it early and, and you don't have time to get, uh, get into the right place. His training's been going. Has he? Have you heard from the coaches in Denmark if he's fully recovered? Because, of course, Victor Axelsson himself has had injury problems, twisted his ankle in the national championships. Yeah, and he, he didn't have a, a very good spring actually. Um, he he uh, he had the win in. Uh, in uh, in India, which was uh, a very good result for him, but after that uh, um, he was struggling, um, and and I think it was it was it, it, it was still he still needed to recover after the Olympics. Uh, he played quite well uh, in the autumn actually, um, and of course winning the uh, the Super Series finals in in Dubai, um, but but he needed um, to get Six, back to base and three. and uh, start all over after Olympics, as, as most players do. Yeah. Um, and and he's, he's had time to do that right now over the summer. And uh, and I'm sure that uh, that has done him, done him a, a lot of good. And and they are very happy with uh, with his training. So, uh, but of course, there's when when you haven't had the best uh, results in the, in the last tournaments, then, then you're always a little bit uh, uh, maybe not nervous, but but insecure about uh, where where you stand, and and that's why I think it's it can be both good and bad for for Axis with this uh, tough draw. If if he can beat Ueda, I think it's very good for him because that will give him confirmation that that he is at where where he has to be, and then I think he can be very dangerous in this tournament. Yeah. Um, yeah in fact, he lost in the second round of the Malaysian Super Series with the number four seed. And two first-round losses in Singapore and Indonesia when seeded three. So yes, that 
take your point. He hasn't had such a good time of late. No, and he ended up actually pulling out of the Australian Open. That's right. Uh, because he needed needed a rest, and and I think that was a very mature and, and a good choice. Um, Plum on the line. Uh, excellent shot. Good feeling. Lovely low movement of this Service man, over. Ueda, Eight. around the court. Just Seven. I know he's not nearly as tall as his opponent, but the way he just smoothly moves in that crouch position and then leaps in the air. Beautiful to watch. Yeah, it was beautiful to watch and a well-placed smash on, on the body of Axelsson mm -hmm. as well to finish it off. to emphasize how dangerous Sueda is. He's twice beaten the man who is now the world number one, Sun Wan Ho. Going Nine, back a couple of years eight. though, but he's beaten some big names. Taufik Hidiat, former world and Olympic champion. Twice beaten Wang Sheming of China. Now retired Wang Sheming. Ten, yeah, and I know some some Danish stars who have, have struggled with him as well in the past. So it's uh, he he is uh, he is a very tough opponent. Uh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. But it is this man, Victor Axelsson, who has the advantage at the big game interval. Det var skært for bare to måneder. Og så ikke for jer nogen af de der. Så Tag lidt af farten af, eller bare pop den op, og så stå i din defensiv. Ja, ja. Øh, det, det, er, det er rigtig vigtigt, det er, at når du løfter eller angriber ud, at du hele tiden er klar. Ja. Det der, at du ikke bare tænker... At... Hele tiden så snart, både når jeg spiller et mellemspil. Ja, klar om kvitter. Ja, lige nu. Han ligger ved pressen lidt, men så over ham, fordi ja. han står hurtigt på den næste, ikke? Jo. Så hvis du bare føler, så tager en lille smule antrik til det her. Det er lidt tilbage. Det er ikke for, at du behøver, at Eleven at play. The advice there, Lars? Yeah, but it, it was, uh, I think, uh, it was a recap of, of what they had talked about. Uh, as their preparation for the match, but but uh, we were talking about the the lifts of Hueda. They have to be perfect height. Uh, it's a little bit easier for for Axelsen because uh, as long as it's high enough, then it's uh, Hueda's attack from the from the backcourt is not uh, that dangerous. So as long as he's in balance, they feel confident that uh, that he can actually uh, cover his defense. He couldn't in this case, so uh, that was not a perfect example. But that's what they were talking about. Yeah. So here we 
energy axis and doesn't mind playing a very, very high lift and, and giving Rueda a lot of time um, because it's does he hit it downwards, then it's actually a, an okay opportunity for, for Axis to, uh, to move Rueda or to, to turn him in the back row. Ball. Wow. 13, 9. Yeah, a nice backhand smash or, or drive there. It's not enough just to hit the backhand at this level. That's a sick level. 10, 13. Mm, it really is just inside the sideline. Yeah, it's good placement and, and the shot before he, he put stress on, on the racket of Exus and then, and that's why he doesn't play uh, a quality clear or or lift from the from the push. Oh, perfect net shot. Uh, brilliant net play from both players. Um, it's a good cross court net from Axis in here, but uh, even better, very accurate. Straight net from Ueda. Ooh. I thought that was mighty close. No challenge from Takuma Ueda. Might be able to see it here. Thought it. Looking at that again, that it did indeed catch the line. Ah! Where is that one? It's called out. 15, 11. Yeah, the line judge was right. Been good, these nine judges. Yeah, we haven't really seen a lot of corrections. No, uh, not at all. And that is very nice. It just, it just give, gives confidence that uh, that everything is, is is going as it should, and uh, and then you can focus on on the game as uh, as we should indeed. Challenge here by Ueda in the in the flat drives. He lures uh, Axelsen to uh, to play right into his racket there, and then he can turn turn his opponent. a moment ago that perhaps Victor Axelsen was beginning to stamp his authority on this opening game, but not a bit of it. Great fight back from Ueda. Oh. 
and in fact goes into the lead. 15, Five straight 15. points from 11.15 down. So now with his nose in front. What's happened? Yeah, but he's, he's, uh, he's stiffening a little bit in his movements, Axel. And, then, and Ueda loves this when the opponent gets a little bit insecure and doesn't play the exact uh, right le length and quality in the, in the shots. And, and when he can gets onto the attack from good positions, uh, then he's very good and, and very aggressive. But Axelsen in this rally picks, goes back to his plan and, and picks up the quality again. And, and that's also, I'm sure, why he uh, he just acknowledges to himself that this was well played. Uh, yeah. Because he knows that's that's the the way it, it has he has to play. to lift from Ueda there under pressure when after Axelsson's attack he plays a cross-court net and uh, he, he lifts it from a very low position very accurately to the to the back court. Well, he's just won seven of the last eight points. Nakanishi, singles coach from Japan. Oh, that's gone long. the last 10 points to give himself four game point opportunities to Kuma Ueda. Stick smash here from Axis and just using his forearm here. Lifting his hand and racket very high and then with a, with a short snap of the, of the forearm uh, places it on the floor. Three seed Victor Axelson in a spot of bother here, having been 15 11 up, went off the boil and Dueda closed it out 21 17. Oh, 
Jeg tager ikke en skid initiativ. Kom nu. Men mest af alt det er, at hvis vi skal have gang i benene, så skal vi have den baglinje med. Men det må ikke blive sådan her, så, så, så kommer han fint op i. Okay. Så er det lige... Når du slår, så skal du hele tiden smasse pusset af. Så får du det gode sejt. Ja, men hellere at der er stærlighed og præcision, end jeg bare slår hårdt. Ja. Fordi nu slår jeg bare hårdt, så inden jeg holder den lige, så jeg slår pusset af. Ja, det er baglinjen. Så kan man lige have den her anden til at kunne Så når han smækker den helt højere af stedet, og den har en god længde. Så lige lad være med at gå den fint ned til jorden, og bare spænde fra et overslag, der får kommunikation. Han vil så gerne have det på at satse på den, og så drejer han. Giver det mening? Yes. Okay. Så hvad vil du nu? Øh, jeg vil stå langt frem på forbanen, ja. og så vil jeg så for at have den ned over ham. Ja. Og så på baglinjen, stejlighed og præcision. Yes. Og så benene også. Second game, love all, play. Well, we've already seen one huge shock and upset uh, today in the men's singles with the four-time beaten finalist. Yu oh. Chong Wei, the number two seed here, beaten in the one first round love. by Brice Levides. Number three seed, Victor Axelsen. Appears to be in a spot of trouble. What was the advice, though, in that timeout? Yeah, well, the, the, the first task for uh, for uh, Kenneth Jonasson was to uh, to calm uh, Axelsen down. He was quite frustrated with uh, the way he played the first game, um, but I, I think they succeeded in that. And and uh, in the end, he uh, he asked Axelsen to to sum up what. What he wanted to, uh, how he wanted to, uh, to approach the game, uh, going back on court, and and that was um, mainly getting the initiative from the front court and, Victor Axelsen and playing it uh, over Ueda um, from from the high net. So uh, so he has to work uh, work hard. Well, challenge here from Axelsen in these early stages of the second game. He's actually handed the shuttle back to his opponent, which seems to suggest that it was in. Yeah. Challenge unsuccessful. Oh. One challenge remaining. Service over. One all. Play. With that. One. Yeah, and it was a very good angled attack, the first one here, and that gives him an opportunity in the front court to, to kill the next one instead of trying to kill the first one with a power smash, where Eurydice has, has uh, have played very good defense uh, in the first game. Concerned about the body language of Victor Axelsen at the moment. Yeah, but he's definitely frustrated, and I think also a little bit, uh, a little bit insecure. And, and that is the problem with when you don't go into a championship like this with uh, with a lot of victories uh, yeah. in, in your bag. Um, and all credit to Ueda. Every time Victor plays his, uh, his cross court net, he's uh, even though it's it's good shots and it's normally played in, in the right situation, he's very. Uh, ready for that, and, and that means he can take it, uh, take it very early.
Super net shot that really set up the rally. Four, two. Yeah, and so far he has done what what he said he wanted to do to take control of the front court and uh, and be aggressive. Clear here, one with the backhand from Axelsen, where Ueda is uh, searching for, for opportunities in the front court, and, and uh, when he plays the clears Axelsen, then uh, he's late in the back court. Good choices. Oh, that's, that's nice. Six, Simple block two. across court into the open space. Yeah, and a good variation in the serve. Just wide. Seven, two. But again, it's a nice idea, isn't it? Lars, because he's trying to change the pace and he's trying to make the tall man really bend down low. Yeah, and, uh, and I think this this only goes wise because it deflects the net, so it was actually a very good shot. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, I agree with you that that, that was actually uh, really well played and, and just a bit unlucky that it was it was too accurate. Well, ever since I said that Axelson, I was concerned about his body language. <laughs> I don't think he's lost a point. <laughs> no, but it is, it is a little bit uh, it is a little bit harder in, from this end to uh, to control the game the way uh, Ueda did in uh, in the first game. So it's and he's really struggling now to uh, to play it over Axelsen with quality as he did in the beginning of the match actually. Oh. Service all three nine. It's a handsome lead in this second game for Victor Axis on second point advantage. Det er jo den der nede, hvor du mister ham. Det skulle du ikke lidt kort til det, Jørgen. Altså, hans ramte hæt, der kan der godt være en lille smule mere plads med ham, ikke? Men her, nu er der antrit, nu er der bevægelse. Nu er der fokus hele tiden på at spille duellerne. Bare husk. Spiller vi slet ned langs linjen, så skal vi være klar. Så skal vi have røven ned og ud til siden. Ready? Quickly. More belief now. 
A lot better spear in the, in the Danish camp right now, yeah. uh, of course. Play. But still a few uh, a few things that they wanted to improve. Uh, one of them, the, the length to uh, to Uedas around the head corner. Axelsen should play it a, a little bit deeper. His lifts. Yes, as he did early on in that rally. Yeah. yeah. Two or four. And he's looking like he, his movements are looking looser and looser, both in the legs and, and in the arms, whereas or in the arm, like, um, whereas in, in towards the end of the first game, it, it became a little more stiff, and uh, and that's very inefficient. You're, you're doing worse shots uh, 13, with a tense arm than, than with a loose one. to me as if Ueda has lost his belief in this second game right now. Yeah, I was just thinking, uh, maybe already now, but at least a, a couple of months more than both players will start preparing for um, for the last game that, yeah. that we will probably have. Oh, barring any injury, I think almost certainly we'll have. In. He knew it. Five, Bit lucky, I think he did that return with the mostly with the frame of his uh, racket. But a good shot, anyhow. It's important for Axis now to, to keep his focus and, and win these uh, these next couple of points to, to keep the gap and make sure that that Ueda doesn't want to uh, to try wholeheartedly to to get back in in this uh, in this game. When you have a lead like this, there's there's no need to uh, to play the game longer than uh, than you no. have to. Again, a very, very loose grip and loose forearm in all of these shots, both from the front court and the back court. And that means that he's much more deceptive, and and it's much harder for for you either to uh, to anticipate the shots. And again, Eighteen, but, same shot. Yeah, but we have to. The shot is good, but we have to take into account that Ueda is is uh, is not working 100% to win the point right now. No, he's given he, up on this. Yeah, uh, he's he's uh, preparing Ueda. for the for third. a good start in in the third game. Oh, the umpire's having a word. The first time, I think that was wide as well, but uh, the second time, there was no doubt. Oh, well taken. Service over 619. Yeah, 
very good reaction from you either here. Well judged. Service over. And up come game, game point, point opportunities, six. a whole host of them. Oof. Crikey, I didn't realise it was that close. that he's taken a new racket wants to try it out <laughs> oh, can cross court smash with pirouette <laughs> that's gone wide it's one game all and the olympic Second bronze medalist has bounced back after defeating that opening game six, to take the second in comfortable style. 21 <laughs> Så hvis han ligger i det helt høje, så skal vi stadigvæk bare have den her neutrale bold, enten som et drop eller en gear, og så klarer den det. Ja, præcis. Primært er det ikke som positivt. Ja, lige nærmest, men hele tiden på. Fokus, fokus. Det vil det hen til den anden skridt. Ja, ligge klar. Okay? Slår vi, så er det altid plus en. Ja, det er det. Åh! 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 ドロップというかは、ゆっくりで、ゆっくり。そのゆっくりって自分が戻る時間を作って。そっちの方がいいと思う。早く打ったら早く打っただけ返してくるのも早く。そのうまく自分のね、我慢と力勝負してみんなが
the opening of, of this uh, deciding game is, is very, very important, and, and they're giving their all now. And, and in the offense, when he gets the first chance, um, as opposed to early on in the match, Axelsen keeps his calm and, and is just playing a, a placement attack, and then he's ready in the front court uh, to follow it up, uh, which has proven much more efficient today than, than going for full on, on the first chance. players are trying to, to play with the aggression that they have played with uh, respectively when they've been on the far side or the far end of the court and, and that's why the speed is so high right now because yeah. uh, none of them are, are taking the speed out. But he's again trying to work the big man, the tall Dane, push him to the back, then bring him forward, making him get down really low. The idea of that cross-court block, I think, is very good indeed. Yeah, it is. He, 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 as you say, he, he wants to turn him on, and every time he can, he's trying to, uh, to play that cross-court defence uh, from Exorcist's attack. Got his feet in position for that one. Three, six. Oh, he was a, he was slightly off balance, and it's I'm, I'm sure uh, Ueda is, is very happy with uh, with this rally because, uh, as you said before, he's he gets to move Axelsen around, and and uh, if he can wear him a little bit uh, a little bit da uh, down, make him a little bit uh, tired, then uh, the sharpness of his attack will uh, will probably. Uh, go away a bit and then it's easier for, for you either to uh, to keep the rallies long. Oh, he's taken it. Service over. Seven, three.
This is one of the things that Fioeta is, is very, very good at, that even though he, he seems to have been outplayed a bit uh, in, a, in a period for a few rallies, then he's very good at, at just staying within reach and, and coming back slowly uh, and without you really notice, but then suddenly he's, uh, he's up at, at level again. Quality neck shot. But Axelsen is, is really determined to, to keep the control now and is, is moving much better uh, compared to, uh, to the first game. it down the line. Uh, it didn't really come as a surprise to him that, that Ueda was going to flick it. Thank you. Nine. Yeah, very good attack here, and, and especially the follow-up, because he's actually a little bit out of balance, but he's, his smash is so well-placed that uh, Axelsen's return is, is too high, and, and then he can run straight into it and, and make the kill. Good spell for Ueda. And this will make the Dane a little bit nervous. Yeah, and it looks a little bit like the, the ending of the first game where, where Axelsen didn't really uh, take control, uh, but just, just played, uh, played the shuttle around. And that's not enough. Um, it has to be with quality and, and an idea all the time. Four. Yeah, it's alert tonight, Axelsen. Uh, even though it was actually a quite deceptive push here from uh, yeah. from Ueda, but uh, he anticipated that, was ready for it. Oh my goodness me! Catastrophic miss as far as Ueda is concerned. Yes, because as we've seen before, he, he's not, he's a little more surprised this time, but he's not very surprised that, that Axelsen plays it cross court. So, uh, so he will be very disappointed with that miss. Okay. 
Ready? I think in fairness to Ueda, that miss at the front of the court, I think he'd actually broken the strings of his racket. Certainly taking a new racket now for the second half of this deciding game. Challenge. Yep, I'm not surprised at that. Challenge from uh, Tukuma Ueda. No, and I think it's, it's, it's worth checking. Oh. He might not be right, but uh, it was a very, very good shot. Very crisp, so... Uh, yes, it was a crucial time too, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, it's his first challenge of this entire match. So what does Hawkeye say? It was out. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Played the serve. Ah, uh, but the serve was a little bit too high, and and that gave you either extra time to uh, to be deceptive. He showed that he wanted to make the push, and that's why Axelsen jumped backwards. Four. Service over. Fourteen nine. and angle from that deep backhand corner of Axelson. Played with what we call the round the head action from the backhand corner, but still with the normal forehand overhead action. Just rolling that wrist at the last moment to play across court. Uh, and that really is one of his, his trademark shots. But what uh, what I think is worth noticing in this rally is that, that actually Axelson had a in a very good attacking position, plays a cross-court punch clear. And that shows that he's he's calming his uh, his head when he's creative like that. That's not a, a shot you see him do very often. Sideways drift from left to right. Getting down the forehand side of Ueda. You've got to make adjustments for that drift.
Yeah, and what his uh, coach Jonasen said to him uh, in the mid-game interval was, it was not so much tactical things, it was stay alert all the time, stay focused, and, and I think that's that's what's Im most important for him uh, right now, so he doesn't 16. let Ueda uh, back into this game. Um, as he happened to do in, in the first game with an almost similar similar lead. Yeah. Nicely done. Yeah, it was 15-11 in that opening yeah. game. The lead for Axelson couldn't convert. from Axelson. Yeah, and, and, and this rally, he, he gets back and finds his inspiration again. Uh, whereas the rally before, it was that was uninspired. That was just shots and uh, he, he didn't really pay attention to. So, uh, so well done by him to, to get back on track because otherwise it, it could be very dangerous. calm and controlled defense there. Just blocking the smash from oh. Ueda straight. Oh, just two points 19, away from 12. a win here, Axelson. Booking his place in the second round. going to be a push or a net shot. And the disguise there brings the Olympic bronze medalist to match point here. Chance at the net there. Good quality in the net spin. Yeah, that tumbling net shot had come out of its tumble and he still managed to kill it. the number three seed, Victor Axelson. But a very good men's singles first round encounter. Takuma Ueda gave it his all, but in the end, Victor Axelson won 13 in the deciding game. A match lasting exactly one hour. So he's safely through after looking a little bit nervous at the start and he will be mighty happy with that performance 
because there really were some very, very good rallies. The Emirates Serena, built for the Commonwealth Games in 2014. Of course, the building also, the Sir Chris Hoy Velodrome. But this week, it's all about the World Badminton Championships. So just one more match to come this evening, and it features home interest. Matthew Carter of Scotland up against Vladimir Malkov of Russia. Well, this is in the very bottom section of the draw, and it's the only match left in this little se section to decide who will contest a second round. And of course, if you weren't with us earlier, the big news, the big shock is that the four-time uh, beaten finalist, uh, Lee Chong Wei, was beaten by uh, Brice Levades in three games of Svonami Dukinyak of Croatia has got through his match against Zibelman. And if you were with us earlier, you will have seen Tian Hao Wei coming from behind in that deciding game to beat Hans Christian Vitinghus. So there's men singles. Matthew Carter up against Vladimir Malkov. Welcome. Welcome on court. Thank you. Thank you. I will ask him first. Black or red? Red. Red, black for you. 